Hi there, Mike Brady, Generosity Wealth Management, comprehensive, full-service financial services firm headquartered here in Boulder, Colorado. So it's now the middle of the summer, kind of the end of June, maybe kind of the beginning, and uh, I just want to do a recap of not only this year, but also maybe the last two, three years to bring us up to where we are now so we can kind of put it into a, a larger perspective. So 2019, good year for the unmanaged stock market indexes. 2020 hit, we had a huge decline once the COVID shutdowns hit. We dumped a lot of money in as a, as a government, as a world, and uh, gosh darn it, 2020 was a, a great year. Uh, go figure. 2021, um, we threw more money in, uh, trillions of dollars, and that started to have an inflationary impact. So we had 2019 good, year 2020 good year 2021 good year 2022 we started off the year that was last year and the fed said hey we've got this inflation problems we better start raising interest rates very quickly which is what they did so there's a huge shock to, shock to the system but i would also argue that we threw a lot of money in to the system in 2020 to paper over some of the issues you can't just slow down you know a huge economy a world economy and expect uh, positive returns um, 2021, we dumped a lot of money in when we created demand, but we the supply chain issues were not resolved. So we had restricted supply. So that kind of led to some of the inflation, which then was sharply addressed in 2022. And in the 2023, we're still addressing that. Um, but not in the same way that we did in 2022. The first nine months, three quarters of last year, 2022, were sharply negative. It, it was not fun at all. I mean, you know this. Um, but, you know, I, I kept saying, if you look back at my quarterly saying, hey, listen, these things happen every once in a while, that this too will pass. At a certain point, um, this is an overreaction. And I believe that the first three quarters of 2022, was giving up what we shouldn't have gotten in 2020 and 2021, which we papered over. Um, you know, we, we put a Band-Aid on with a bunch of money flowing in, which had its own repercussions. So since uh, the fourth quarter of 2022, positive for the unmanaged stock market indexes, first quarter 2023, this last quarter 2023 as well, the second quarter was a positive one. So that's nice. we got three quarters in a row of positive returns. Up on the screen, you're going to see kind of a longer period. You'll see that we've done, depending on the in, unmanaged stock market indexes and what someone's portfolio looks like, it's a third to a half of what was given up in last year, 2022. Um, when we look at the bonds, the unmanaged bond indexes, they have not come back quite as quickly, which is very frustrating. It's unique that bonds and stocks go down at the same time in the same year and 2022 was that perfect storm so they haven't come back quite as uh, nicely um, because interest rates haven't gone down quite as nicely um, as we would like when you look about the screen though what you're going to see is uh, interest rates though are projected to decrease uh, over the coming months um, you know yes there might be another uh, increase or two but pretty much everyone and some of the comments from, from the Fed have led us to believe that the opposite of what led such a bad um, outcome in 2022 will be a good income in 2023 and 2024 as interest rates then go down. When we look up at the screen, uh, you're going to see a uh, you know, 1, 5, 10, and 20 years um, kind of mix mash of uh, um, stocks by themselves is that bar on the left-hand side bonds by themselves, and then the third bar in each one of those categories is uh, a mix of stocks and bonds, unmanaged uh, bond indexes and, and stock indexes. And what you'll see is over five years, there's actually never been a, uh, uh, you know, a, a five-year time horizon where a, a, mash, a mix, mix, ma mix and match of uh, stocks and bonds um, hasn't at least broken even or made just a little bit of money. So one year, absolutely. Two years, definitely. Um, but once we go out from a three, a five, a, a 10 or 20 year time horizon, um, the uh, historically what has happened as uh, the, the 
negatives have been offset by the positives with the positive winning out. Um, when I showed you that first uh, screen, I'm going to put it up here again, uh, three out of four years are positive, one out of four are negative. That's just the way it happens. Uh, and um, sometimes those uh, it's two years in a row that are negative. Um, sometimes it's not three years positive, it's uh, six years positive. Great, wonderful. Sometimes it's, it's, you know, but when we start adding them all together, that's when we get into, historically, about three out of four years. Um, we've got um, here up on the screen, consumer confidence is starting to re rebound. I've, I've put a circle around it. Um, you know, this is the thing that we as investors have to remember is um, when everyone is feeling great, that's when you maybe need to worry. Uh, and when... Um, people's uh, enthusiasm is at its lowest. It counterintuitive is that's when we want to buy, right? That's when it might be, you know, the best opportunity for us to, um, you know, to have that extra investment or to hold tight because maybe the recovery is right around the corner. I mean, think back over the last year and a half or so, um, nine months ago, where you're like, God, I wish I had more money I could throw in. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, so you've got to um, be in control of your own emotions and understand that when it feels the most uncomfortable is often the time when uh, the recovery is right around the corner. And that's historically been the case. Consumer confidence is what we call a lagging indicator, not a leading one, but a lagging one, meaning that once things are looking great, then everyone feels good. Well, that's, that's too late. Uh, once everyone feels bad, it's already gone down. So that's too late as well. So the emotions do not um, lead us to the right outcome uh, that we want or the right path. And so uh, the first advice that I would give is to, to be aware of that and to think about it for yourself and many times be contrarian to what your emotions are telling you um, and give me a call and we can talk it through. Uh, one thing I would like to to share though, as we're in the middle of the year, is I have done for some clients uh, some research on some of the big banks, you know, the savings and, and checking account rates, and uh, they're still pretty pathetic. I mean, almost zero. And uh, if you've got a lot of money in a bank, it behooves you to do some research. Uh, there are uh, CDs, there are money markets, there's treasures, a lot of different strategies. You got to pick the one that's right for you. Um, you got to do your research, talk with me. But I'm just telling you that there's a lot of different things that are out there that, um, that you should explore. A little bit of uh, work can um, dramatically increase just the cash that is risk-free or practically risk-free. Um, normally going from one uh, kind of uh, cash to another cash equivalent, it's not that big of a deal, a, a tenth of a percent, you know, maybe a, a fifth of a percent. Now we're talking about big variances of, of a, a few percent, and, uh, and that can make a big impact for cash that um, maybe you want to keep safe, you want to keep on the sidelines, maybe you're going to need it in a year or six months or for whatever purposes you might need, you may as well maximize it. Um, and especially on the short term, uh, you know, these rates are, are high right now, but if the interest rates start to go down, they will go down as well. And so, uh, you know, really start to think about that. Think about your cash and are you maximizing the interest rates on your cash? Of course, you should be maximizing, um, you know, your total return from a long-term point of view as well. I mean, that's what you hear me say every time I uh, put out a video is saying we've got to have some long-term vision of multiple years Where's our path that we're going towards and how are we going to get there? So that's it. Things are looking good for 2023. Uh, fourth quarter 2022, good. First quarter, second quarter 2023, good. Um, you know, we still have a ways to go to uh, completely wipe away what happened in 2022, get back to where we were in 2021. But uh, given some time, I feel confident that we'll be there before we know it. Mike Brady, Generosity Wealth Management, 303-747-6455. You have a great day. Great summer. Bye-bye.